Hi everybody, this is Joel Wood, your lobbyist here at the Council. I want to reflect on two news developments of the past week. One on health care reform, one on surplus lines reform. First of all, you've probably seen the headlines that the Obama administration, HHS, have pulled the plug on the CLASS Act, a major part, portion of the Affordable Care Act uh, on the creation of a long-term care program that was going to be a model of adverse selection and we believe ultimately, as I think the administration concluded, was going to be a complete money pit for taxpayers. It, however, was used to justify $70 billion worth of paper savings of the Affordable Care Act, of health care reform over the 10-year window, and nobody's yet suggesting where that money's going to come from. The collapse of the Class Act, I think, has given even more momentum to Republican leaders in thinking through how they're going to address the broader repeal and replace of Obamacare. Uh, it was just visiting with one of the leaders of the House uh, Republican uh, Caucus uh, today, and he discussed more vividly the prospects of the use of the reconciliation process, which you'll recall was used rather torturously uh, and, on, and on a partisan basis to, to get to that, uh, that final vote on uh, passage of health care reform. If Republicans retake control of the Senate, I think that's a high likelihood given the numbers uh, of vulnerable Democratic seats compared to Republican seats. If Republicans keep control of the House of Representatives, I think that's likely. Uh, and if Republicans retake the White House, you tell me whether or not that's uh, possible or not. I think that you're going to see this being viewed by the Republican leadership as a referendum on health care reform, and I think you're going to see that reconciliation process employed again. And I, I'm seeing more bullishness on the part of Republican leaders that they might be actually uh, able to achieve broad-based reform of it as opposed to incremental reform of the Affordable Care Act, worth us keeping a very, very close eye on. Second thing on the surplus lines front, uh, as you know, it's uh, been a torturous implementation with respect to the state response to the Not Admitted in Reinsurance Reform Act, a part of the Dodd-Frank Act, with respect to attempting to harmonize the placement of multi-state risks uh, via the uh, not admitted surplus lines marketplace. The NEMA states that have been a part of the premium tax allocation compact uh, have announced that their clearinghouse is not yet ready for the sharing of premium taxes among the states that are participating in it. And so they are postponing the actual uh, sharing of, uh, of that allocation dollars. Uh, through that uh, mechanism. We actually think that this is a positive development. States, as I said, have been all over the map on this. Throughout the entire political process of the creation of the Not Admitted and Reinsurance Reform Act, we were ag agnostic on the issue of whether or not we thought states should just go it alone, as the big states have decided to do, in terms of 100 percent collection of the premium tax for any home state insured in a multi-state uh, transaction versus uh, whether or not we think thought that states should go together in a compact. Given the reality that brokers are going to be paying for this clearinghouse and these allocation schemes and ultimately uh, your clients are going to be paying for it, I think we're increasingly of the view uh, that the more time that this requires to get that up and running, the more states may actually view that 100 percent regime uh, as a desirable one. And so we are going to be keeping a very, very close eye. We'll be engaged with states across the board, uh, those that are slim pack states, those that are NEMA states, those that are going it alone. We'll keep you abreast of all the developments. Thanks very much for all your support. We'll be talking to you soon.